Hello and welcome back to another edition of Telescope Man. Well, I'm continuing to discuss uh, KE9NS's revisions to Power SDR. What I wanted to do in this video was kind of show you a little bit about his latest revision, which came out September the 25th. <clears throat> it's still called T9, but uh, he has uh, revision updates on his site that tell you what he's done recently. And his most recent one is September 25th. At that time, he added a beam heading to the DX clusters that are automatically put on the screen by the new Power SDR software. So <clears throat> now you can tell which direction to point your antenna uh, if you have a rotatable uh, Yagi or maybe a dipole or whatever you might be using. It's got to be rotatable though. Uh, I'm, I'm continuing to be very amazed at what he's doing. And in this video, I'll kind of go a little more in depth and kind of take you through some of the newer screens that he's developed, just to give you an idea. So let me uh, get back over here on the desktop. I'll switch over to the desktop, and then you'll be able to see uh, his uh, T10 revision running on my Flex 3000 right now. So hang on. And so here we go. This is the uh, typical screen that you get on a Flex radio. And As you can see, I'm on 14275, just listening to a signal that's coming in there on 20 meters. So, uh, right off the bat, let me show you one of his new things. Now, the Flex has always had what's called Panafall. Panafall. Let me kind of bring that up. This is part of the original software, nothing that he's done. A uh, little drop box here, as you can see, and one of the selections is Panafall, so let's click that. And immediately, half of the screen is a pan adapter up here, and the other half is what we call a waterfall that shows the signals. Now, the other thing he's done uh, that's kind of neat is this little auto waterfall pan level text here, if you click it, it kind of averages the signals uh, based on the receive strength of whatever antenna you're using. You can see how it cleared up some of the clutter here. And now you get a, a better picture of the actual uh, waterfall data. Whenever you switch antennas or possibly even switch bands. Uh, you just click this thing right here that says auto waterfall pan level and it'll adjust the waterfall. That's a that's kind of a new feature. Now uh, let me bring up a box that's not readily apparent. Bring it over on the screen and let you see it. I'm gonna click what's called the spotter. The spotter up here at the top. And I'm going to get a box that opens up. And I want to take you through this box because <clears throat> there's lots of neat features in this one place uh, in his revised software. So as you can see up the top, he's already given you three different DX clusters that you can use to find out who is transmitting long distance right now. And there's one, there's a second, and there's the third. You can pick whichever one. And of course, you can add uh, others to this if you, if you prefer another one. Now, what is this? Well, there's hams that uh, listen to the bands or 
could be myself, and we can report what we hear into a website that accumulates uh, all those reports and then posts them in what's called the DX spotting cluster. It's kind of a real-time way to see what's being heard on the amateur radio bands. And it's been around for a while, and there are various websites that you can go to that uh, accumulate these report real-time reports. But he's built all that into Power SDR. You don't need any third-party software anymore. So let me kind of go through some of these buttons, and it might be difficult to read them uh, on the YouTube resol resolution because they're gray or black. Uh, anyway, the first one here says North American Spotters Only. So if I click this box, it's only going to post uh, signals that are heard by North American Spotters. So if I leave it unchecked like that, then it's going to report any spots reported from anywhere. And if I click the bottom box, it says exclude North American spotters. So if I click this one, uh, it'll just get the rest of the world and not uh, North America. I'm going to leave them both unchecked so everything comes in. Then there's some selections on what reports you want to see. The first one says spot CW, it's check. The next one says spot phone, which is voice, and it's check. And the third one says uh, spot digital, which means digital signals. You notice all three are checked, but you can just uncheck them if you don't want to hear CW reports, or you can uncheck this one if you don't want to hear digital reports. I'm going to leave them all checked for now, just so basically everything that's being reported is going to show up on the screen. So now that you know what some of these are, I'm going to click the Spot DX button, which I just did. And then momentarily, uh, after it starts receiving those reports, you're going to be able to see those stations listed right here. While it's doing that, let me draw your attention to another button called Track, Track. And if we look above it, you can have sun tracking, gray line tracking, and special Panafall mode. Okay, now let me kind of show you what that special, I'm going to click Track. So it's going to show us where the sun is. It's going to give us a gray line on the map. I'll explain those in a second. And it'll also give us a special display. So let's click track. I just did that. Let's move it out of the way here. As you can see, it's still got, it's got the waterfall on there again. But this time, instead of the screen being split 50-50, it's like, uh, three quarter and one quarter. I like this a lot. Uh, it still gives you this great big pan adapter so you can readily see the signals, but then it shows you the uh, pan, uh, the pan, pan of fall below it, the waterfall, and you can pinpoint some signals very quickly by looking across the waterfall. Again, we'll click this auto waterfall pan level just to make sure it's uh, receiving it all right, and it is. And it really cleans up the signals on the waterfall. So that's what that special panafall mode means. You get this screen. You also, you might have noticed, there's some DX spots already showing up on the map. This world map here in the background, it's, it's now reporting DX being heard at all these positions here. Let me kind of move this out of the way so you can see it. 
See, this is uh, some other BX stations coming in from, uh, looks like uh, Spain and somewhere in Europe. So uh, here we've got one, might be Hawaii, but might not, might be someplace else. I'm going to have to look that up. Anyway, um, that's how the DX spots show up on the screen. They're positioned uh, either by call sign or just simply by country in the appropriate location on the map, which is kind of cool. And it also draws a little line. You can see it drew one right here for one of them. Uh, and that's the person's call sign up here. If you uh, right-click this call sign and hold down the control key, it will take you to a special website where you can find out all about this call sign, where it is, and, uh, you know, the person's name, and any other information that they might have put on this uh, special website called qrz.com. So just by right-clicking and hitting control right here on this call sign where this person is transmitting at that frequency, uh, you'll be able to find out all about the person. Now, if you click, this is what's kind of neat. It's not just a picture in the background. The information there is live and actually working. So this particular call sign right here, if I click the little red dot and hit the control key, it moves the radio directly to that frequency where that person is transmitting. Doesn't mean you're going to hear them. And sets up the radio in the proper mode so that you can transmit, uh, you know, if and when you actually get a signal, you can hear a signal. Uh, <clears throat> in this case, it moved me to 30 meters um, CW, which is uh, Morse code. So this person is uh, transmitting some CW, maybe. Or it may be voice. Uh, looks like it's set it up in voice by the look of the bandwidth that it set it up in. It's a normal voice uh, bandwidth. Uh, so you got to remember some of these porn stations have privileges in areas of the amateur radio band that the U.S. operators don't may not have that particular privilege, like voice at 10.105. Normally, we do not transmit their voice. We'll be transmitting CW there. Anyway, uh, all these country locations that you see popping up on the map, those are live data that the radio will automatically switch to. Now, here's the little trick he just did. If you look at the end of the call sign, like uh, here's a call sign D66D, all right, right here, and you can see a number 68 degrees next to that call sign. They all have a certain degree. This one says 335, and this one says uh, 277. That's the beam heading. Uh, if you have a rotatable antenna, that's where you need to point it to, to be pointed across the great circle, uh, directly pointed at that VX uh, position. So, automatically does that. You have, There's a little setup. You have to tell the program your latitude and longitude of the station you're at, and from then on, it'll calculate these beam headings for you, so you know where to point your antenna. Pretty neat. Now, normally, that was done by another third-party software that you'd have running on a computer. 
so that you could look up that call sign and get a beam heading for that particular call sign. But now you actually see it on a map and it also tells you the correct beam heading uh, if you want to try to make a contact with that VX entity. Let me move this big box back over here again so you can see. It's been steadily uh, going out and getting DX long distance uh, reports of spots where DX is being heard. It's putting them on this list. Uh, if no one hears a particular spot for 30 minutes and never reports it again, uh, that spot will drop off this list. Uh, you can simply double click one of these lines. Let's see, let's double click this uh, JT1, which is probably a Japanese station. We'll double click that, and it basically took me directly to where that person is transmitting. So, um, and I do hear a RTTY signal. So, Maybe that person is transmitting RTTY didn't actually read everything in the little uh, box that I should have. Yes, yeah, we got RTTY coming in, which is radio teletype, and the word up means he's listening above the frequency he he or she is transmitting. So let's say he's on the. 14.001 uh, transmitting ready radio teletype and you see the word up this goes for any of the spotting software uh, then that means he's listening above that break so he might be listening at 14.005 or 14.0010 usually not more than 10 up 10 away from uh, wherever that person's transmitting. Yeah, and the common number they use is 5. 5 up. So if he was at 14.001, then uh, you need to transmit at 14.006. And uh, when you transmit, if he's listening at your particular frequency, then he'll be able to hear you. So anyway, pretty neat. It spotted all this DX here that you can see and is reporting it, continuing to report it, and it's continuing to place those stations on the map. It can get quite cluttered, as you can imagine, because I've got everything turned on, all the spotting from everywhere in every mode is turned on so it's spotting a whole bunch of them and it gets kind of confusing a little bit but uh, normally you wouldn't do that you would have it spot digital or spot voice or spot cw whatever mode you were uh, you were interested in at that time so it wouldn't be quite as cluttered let's uh get in this box again i have one more thing i want to show you i'm going to turn off the spotting which I just did, turned off the spotting, and I'm going to come up here and change to shortwave listening. That's this little button up here that says SWL. We're going to click that, and all of a sudden you get all the particular frequencies that are used by... Uh, commercial shortwave stations. He has a database. He has a database of about 11,000 shortwave stations that uh, you can listen to if they're beaming in your direction. So, let's come on in here and we will click the spot short wave listening button right here and it's reading them and it's going to try to bring in 11,504 
<laughs> shortwave stations. And it's already done that. You can see them positioned uh, all over the map now. And uh, let me kind of switch. I'm going to switch to um, 61 meters right here. And we're going to look around and see if we see some. All right, here's Radio Tarma. Radio Tarma right here. And there's the frequency they're on. And if you look down here, you can see there's no signal. Let me uh, kind of go back. Uh, here's another two stations, uh, Bangladesh and uh, Madagascar. They're at this frequency right here. Again, no signal. But anyway, you can peruse the various bands looking for the U.S. Air Force messages, uh, looking for various shortwave signals that you can listen to. Now, there is some uh, settings that you can uh, set this to. <clears throat> Let me kind of show you that. And they're right here on this side. All right. So if I want a list of them, okay, that I can click this button. I'm going to get another box. Let me kind of get rid of this one. And there it is. And there are the shortwave listening stations. It's already uh, captured in a list. You can do some searching in this box up here. All right. You could search for RTTY, for instance, and, uh, and the only ones you'd get would be the uh, stations that are transmitting RTTY. you get those in this list. Again, you can double click on any of these. Uh, here's China, China Radio International. We double click it. We go directly to China Radio uh, National Radio right here. All right. Again, they're not beaming toward us, so we can't hear them. But what he's done is basically converted the flex radio into probably one of the best short wave listening trans receivers that uh, you could possibly want. Um, in combination with a rotatable beam, there's probably hundreds of shortwave stations that you could listen to if that is something you're interested in. So with that said, let me kind of switch back to my smiling face here just for a second. Here we go. Kind of switch back here and just say, uh, if you haven't, you're undecided on a, SDR software defined radio or you're interested in learning about it you need to go to ke9ns.com ke9ns.com I'll put that in the description the link and uh, when you get to his main page uh, just look up at the top left hand part of this page you'll see flex 5000 a little button just push that Click that, and you'll go right to where he has his revised software and where it can be downloaded. He's also got uh, many videos that describe the operation of the Flex Radio, the 5000, 3000, 1500, and probably one of the most comprehensive sites on Flex Radio that I've ever seen. So if you're interested in at all in what is a software defined radio, you can go there and just peruse through his videos. And when you get done, you're not only going to know about his software, which is free to download, but you'll also know a whole lot about the capabilities of a software defined radio versus a standard analog type radio. Anyway, with that said, I hope that was interesting for you to see some of those features. It's really cool stuff going on. 
and uh, I don't know what to tell you. I'm continually surprised by what he develops and uh, puts out there for all of us to use. And very frequently, usually every week or two, he's got another re revised software that he's put out there with more features. So no telling what he's going to have uh, coming out with next. I'm interested in seeing it. Anyway, until next time, I hope you enjoyed this little video. I wish you clear skies in 73, and remember to keep looking up to see the greatest show on earth right over your head every single night. Till next time, y'all be good. Take care. <laughs>